Christian Del Sol, we are so glad that you have joined us for worship today. If you are worshiping with us online, we encourage you to let us know that you're here by signing in on the virtual friendship pad or on Facebook so that we can all greet each other during and after the worship service. For those that are here in person, we'll have a time for our children right after our announcements and all the kids are invited to come sit right up here in the front uh, and hear a children's message by Nilma. And then afterwards, kids will all be invited to go to Sunday school over in our education wing and kids and parents can pick them up after the worship service is over um, in room uh, 107. So we look forward to seeing you, uh, seeing the kids up front and I'm sure Miss Jane looks forward to seeing them over in Sunday school. Let us be called to worship. Please rise in heart and mind and join me in our responsive call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord all my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. Praise the Lord. Today we gather in this holy place in awe of God's grace and forgiveness. Let us join together in confession to pray with the confidence in God's unending mercy. Almighty Lord, we cry out feeling unworthy to approach your throne of grace. We feel lost and polluted by our mistakes, selfishness, ignorance, and pride. Have mercy on us for being disoriented by society's values. Yet you call us your own. You are our only hope. Forgive us for not pursuing justice, loving kindness, and mercy. Guide us to the hope found only in you. Now hear our silent prayers of confession. Amen. Our triune God is holy, loving, 
faithful, forgiving, constant, present, and filled with grace and truth. With the confidence of knowing our Savior Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us rise to sing our praise. gather to proclaim God's hope, hope that draws us past our limits, defies our expectations, questions what we have known, and makes a way where there is none. The signs of this hope come in the passing of the peace. The peace of Christ be with you. today. We're so glad that you're here in worship. A few things um, about the life and ministry that are going on here at the church. I hope you've read our soundings newsletter. If you haven't, then let us know. Um, our first announcement is from Steve Rowe. I'd like to invite him to come forward for our announcement about the vision campaign. Yep. Uh, good morning, friends. In the sanctuary and online, during the past few weeks, we've invited you to rejoice with us. I think that included jumping up and down and, and shouting as we have highlighted our debt reduction. And there should be a lot of hallelujahs for that, for sure. To renew the commitment to continue this progress and to revive the debt reduction results that will grow opportunities to serve and connect with others in the community. And don't you wonder what our, our future will look like? Well, I invite you to check your old expectations at the door and join us in a new vision. Let's have a little fun with this as well this morning. Because our future is wide open and full of possibilities that only God knows about this moment and what it will shape for us. Near the, the hymnal in the front of, your, in the front of you uh, is a little vision gift that we are all giving to you. A little, a little kaleidoscope. And what we'd like you to do is hold this to your eyes and enjoy the wonder. Laugh with joy. Open yourself to seeing this in a new way. I'd also recommend you using it against some of the color in the room because it looks a little bit better. But be a child again as you look with wonder at the endless and exciting opportunities. So look around. I think so. You find them in the front? Amazon had these on sale, if you didn't know. <laughs> Jesse, you want to play the video? Should we play the video? Let's go and play the video, please. Cue the video. In the future, with the Mission of Soul, I'd like to see a bunch of kids going up for the children's session up front and 
being able to continue to go to Miss Jane's room and learn about the great lessons we have from scripture. Um, when I return from college in a few years, I would really like to see, as Kelly said, more kids, just a more interactive church where people really care to see what the kids are doing. Yeah, I would love to see a big youth program, kids our age right now, 16 to 18 years old in high school, just going out and doing a bunch of mission work and volunteering. I would like to see more of our church members eager and willing to participate in the leadership of this church. That we grow in our knowledge of knowing who God is, and that we grow in our call as we go out into the community to serve God more clearly and more deeply to those locally around us and those wider. I'd like to see a lot of people join their church. Personally, I wanted to have far more social gatherings, but I really like social gatherings in people's homes, in the yard, like we're having tonight. It doesn't have to be at the church, but where you're gathering with friends and fellowship and just having a good time. And that's exactly what I want to do. I want to have more get-togethers in person with people because I'm going to be see that Norma has got the uh, the best known method for doing videos by having a, like a glass of wine as you do it. So it's a note to all of you when we ask you to do videos for us. We <laughs> thank you for all of that. We need we need your help to make this vision a reality. We have already have pledges towards 50% of our financial goal. And either by mail or in the newsletter you've received a vision pledge card. We welcome your contribution by pledge or through the QR code located on the, on the back of the pew. Uh, doing it online is very easy as well. God, God only knows what's in store for us, but we have the opportunity to open our aperture as to what that could be. So I encourage you to do that, and thank you for your time this morning. Thanks, Steve. And thanks for all those who got to do videos for me this week. <laughs> got to, with a choice. <laughs> a few of the things that are going on in the life and ministry here at Mission Del Sol, we have our family mission project after church. So families of all ages are invited to meet in room 206. Um, we'll be getting ready for family promise and doing a few activities in preparation for them. We also need your help after worship in Mission Hall. We'll be getting our Lent bags ready. I know Lent is starting in just a few weeks, so next week we'll, they'll be ready for you to pick up, and we need some help putting all those bags together. We also have our mission t-shirts that have finally arrived, so those of you who pre-ordered, you can pick those up over um, right by the food and, re and refreshments from Doug or Jeanette. Um, or you can purchase your t-shirt. If you're still trying to decide what size you needed, now is your chance to, to look at that. Uh, we have a few spots left for to go to St. Mary's Food Bank on Thursday, and we're getting ready to go to St. Vincent de Paul to do our gardening on March 5th and 12th, which are Saturdays, so all are invited to come, and we encourage you to sign up online or see Jeanette um, for more information. And also, just a preparation, next week is Youth Sunday, so come ready to hear from our youth and uh, have some enjoyment and hear about their life experiences. Uh, I think that's all of our announcements, so find any more information, see me or those that I mentioned, as well as um, see the soundings for more details. I'd like to invite our kids, young and young at heart, to come forward for our children's message. some helpers, lots of helpers, but we're going to keep these in order because I don't know how well this is going to go today, so <laughs> yeah, so Colby and Claire, can you all come down here closer so we're kind of in a, so we, you can all read because my printing isn't very legible, so I need to, who wants to be number one? 
Here, let's do it. So today's Bible lesson was about Jesus is meeting with, who is he? Simon Peter, right? And do you know what's special about it? They're fishing. He's a fisherman. And he's the man, just as a FYI, that said he didn't know Jesus. So Jesus says, comes and he's talking to his disciples, and he says to them, Jesus, what does he say? Turn it around. Okay. What did Jesus say to Simon? Read it for us, please. All right. And who has number two? So what did Simon Peter answer? Read it in the back. Yes, Lord. You know I do. All right. And then who has number three? What did Jesus say? Feed my fear. All right. Simon Peter's thinking, what's this all about? So what did Jesus say again? Who has number four? He knew. Do you love me? Do you love me? Here he's asking the same darn question again. And who is number five? What does Simon Peter say? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. And then what does Jesus say? Number six. Then Jesus said, take care of my sheep. What's he talking about? I'm a fisherman, and you're telling me to take care of my sheep? So then, what does Jesus say? Let's see. Hey, you're seven. You're seven. You read the Oh, do you love me? All right. So again, Jesus said, do you love me? And what did Simon Peter say? Who's got, or no, what, yeah, who's, what did Simon Peter say? Oh. Yes, Lord, you know all things. And then, what did Jesus say? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Now, are, are you as confused as I am? I know. Why did he keep asking that? Good governor. Has anybody ever said to you, oh, I love you? Oh, that's easy to say, isn't it? Oh, I love you. And then I turn my back on you when you're starving or you need help with somebody or you need help with something. So what I think Jesus is trying to tell Simon Peter, number one, he forgave him, but he forgives all of us. But I think he's really trying to say to us, we do more than say, I love you, right? What do we say? What, what do we do? Don't we feed people? We help people? Do we do mission projects? What else? Be kind. One more. Go ahead. Um, help the children in need. Help the children in need. I think you've got it. You all have it and know what Jesus said. So thanks. Yeah, and you can have a mark or two on the board. So what have we been talking about all this time? Love and how much Jesus loves us, right? All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, help us to show our love for you by loving and caring for one another. Amen. All right, there's the marker. You can take these boards. There you go.
The scripture reading this morning is from John 21, verses 15 through 25. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the believers that the disciples would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, If I want to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have the room for the books that would be written. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray together. Lord, it is your love that brings us to this place. Now may your love use my humble words and all the meditations of our hearts so that we might hear the word you have for each of us this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, for the past four weeks, we've been talking about love from every different angle. We've discussed love as purpose and action. We've shared what happens when we are good at love and what happens when we aren't so good at love. We have talked about the challenges of loving others, and I have come to one conclusion. Love is hard. It's hard enough to do the hard work of loving the people we care about, when our actions require time and attention, when our lives are already so full. It's hard when love includes doing what others want instead of what we want to do. It takes work to put out the energy of love to love those who don't respond to the love the same way we do. And love gets even harder when we are asked to love those we disagree with, when we're challenged with everything that we do and what we believe. And if I'm being honest, it's hard to love the world when we're so divided about everything. It seems like we can't even agree on standing on love together. But the other truth about love is that there are lots of other reasons that make love hard. It's true that the busyness and disagreements are sometimes the biggest ones that make it difficult to love people that are harder to love. It definitely makes it harder for us when we're working on social issues in our own community. But the hardest part 
when it comes to loving is the shame we feel for things that we have or have not done and the fear that goes along with meeting those expectations we set for ourselves or the ones we set for others. I'm sure that's how Peter felt on after Jesus' death. Now remember, Peter is the one who has a big heart. He's the first one to jump up and follow Jesus after he leaves his fishing boat. He leaves his job and his family to follow Jesus. He was the first to proclaim that Jesus was the Messiah, and he was in the trusted confidant of three that followed Jesus very closely. And he wants to be with Jesus at his right hand always. He's also the one who stood up for Jesus, and whether it was right or wrong, he was willing to build a house for Jesus on the Transfiguration Day. He was also the first to promise he would never abandon Jesus at the Last Supper. And I think that we could probably summarize by saying that Peter was good at, at expressing love. That is, until it got hard. And after Jesus was taken away by the Pharisees to be tried and eventually sentenced to death on the cross, Peter ran into how hard love really is. It wasn't long after he left Jesus when the disciples all scattered to various places in order to be safe. And Peter found his way to a small community gathered around a campfire. And it was there that his love for Jesus was tested. For Jesus, uh, for Peter, it wasn't hard to leave his family or his job that he loved. It wasn't hard to listen and learn from Jesus or even be challenged by the things that he had said. It wasn't even hard to disagree with the Pharisees at every turn. He didn't seem challenged by the people who disagreed with all the things that Jesus said. It was at this moment when fear won over love. It was when he said he didn't really know who Jesus was. And too often, when fear and shame win, we retreat from love, which is exactly what Peter did. He returned home and started fishing which is where the resurrected Jesus found him that day. The theologian Bernard of Clairvaux says that there are four different stages of love. The first is love of self for our own sake, which is when we love because it benefits us. It's when we have pleasure or we, we love that cookie because we know how much we love cookies. Or when we receive something in order to, re and we respond to it. We love for ourselves. Now the second stage, he says, is love of God for our own sake, which means we love God because we know that God has been with us through various struggles in our lives, and we know that Jesus has rescued us and gives us strength through whatever challenge it is that we're facing. And we could probably say that Peter had made it through these first two stages pretty well until that day. The third stage is the love of God for God's sake, which is when we love God not because we get something in return, but because we love God for God being God, and our actions start to show it. It's no longer that we just love, it's that we start to love other people, and we care about other people, and we want to do things for other people, not for ourselves, but because we love God, and God knows, and God loves those people. Sometimes we make it to this stage, and Peter probably did too, but it's a little harder. Now Bernard says that there is a fourth stage. This is the love of ourselves for God's sake. And he says that we rarely make it to this stage because it is so hard for us to love who we are because of, what, because of shame and fear and worries that sort of halter that love that God has already for us. But no matter what Bernard says, God keeps showing up in love. And that's exactly what happened in this moment. Jesus shows up as the disciples are fishing that day. And again, just as they began their ministry, Jesus says, throw your net to the other side. And they did. And the boat starts to sink because there's so much weight from all of the fish. And that's when Peter realizes that it's Jesus who said, throw his nets. 
and he jumps off the boat and swims to shore. And when he arrives, Jesus is cooking fish for them to eat, a meal gathered around with his own community. I don't know about you, but food always seems to show up when we're working on reconciling love. Whether it's fellowship over a potluck dinner, or a meal with a person you love, or a conversation with people you disagree with, or a reunion like this one. Love is found in the making and serving and eating of food. It's found in the conversations when you have something to do with your hands and something to put in your mouth. And you realize that something good is happening here. And that's when Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Now, a lot of times we get into this text, we start to talk about the different kinds of love found in the Greek. But I don't think that really matters here for our purpose. So we can talk about that in a Bible study sometime. Instead, let's focus on these words and responses from Peter and Jesus. And Peter, of course, says, yes, of course I love you. And it's almost as if Peter is reassuring himself that he does love Jesus enough, even though he failed to prove it when he denied him only a few days ago. And Jesus says, well, feed my lambs. If you notice, this is an action. It's as if Jesus says, okay, you didn't prove it by saying you love me, but go out and do it. Feed the people. Teach them about how God's love looks like grace. The grace found in forgiveness when we realize that we've failed to live out our love in Christ. Grace found in inclusion and in community and in hope. The grace found again and again and again when we come together. And then Jesus says, but Peter, do you love me? And Peter, a little more sure of what he's about to say, says, yes, you know that I love you. And Jesus says, well then, tend to my sheep. It's almost as if Jesus is saying, love is hard work. It's more than just about knowing. Because usually, we know what is right and wrong, but it's a lot harder to practice what is right and wrong every single day. And he says, it's like he's saying, there's moments when you're not going to succeed at loving. And there will be moments when we don't even know how to show that we love. But love never looks like beating ourselves up for failing to love. It's never about always getting it right. Love just calls us once again to say, do you love me? And for Jesus to say, yes, I love you. And for us in response to say, I love you too. So then Jesus asks Peter one last time, do you love me? And more sure than he was before, he said, yes, you know all things. You are in all things. You know I love you. And Jesus says for the third time, take care of my sheep. Teach them about love. Learn about love and how to love each other. Don't just say it. Do it. Because love is what is about to change the world. Love is what brings hope back into our lives. Love is what makes everything right when everything else seems sideways. What Jesus was getting at is that the hard work of love is about what happens when we leave this place and this community. It's what happens when we get on the school bus or in the classroom. It's what happens when we're at work and at home. Love is what happens inside this place, and love is what happens outside. And when we love God, we in turn love the world. I think that's what Bernard was really talking about in his stages. The disciples, including Peter, got caught up in what love looked like. They expected love to look a specific way in the future, with a king 
who had an army and a lot of power, and he was going to just take control of everything, and certain people were going to be right, and certain people were going to be wrong. And love sometimes looks like power. Sometimes love comes from a king. But God's love never happens like that. Because this is a new way of living. A way where love starts not from the top, but from the core. It starts from the middle and it starts to spread further and further and further out into the community. Like ripples on the water. The early church also started to get it wrong. They thought that love was all about heaven and eternal life. That when Jesus, that Jesus would come back in just a few months' time and they just needed to survive until then and just keep strong in themselves. But Jesus never came back in a few months. And they still had to keep struggling with food insecurities and challenges with the government and money problems. And it just kept going on and on. But I think that's what Jesus was trying to help Peter understand. Because Jesus was really saying, love now. Put love into action right now. Because we need love. We need love more than we need dividing lines. We need love more than we need people to be right and wrong. We need love more than like or tolerate. It's almost as if we've been building a world where all of those things came first. And we thought that love would follow. But it really hasn't. Jesus' way has never been about agreement. Jesus' way is about love. In fact, I would imagine if you looked around this room, you'd realize that we don't all agree about everything. Or maybe you already realize that. I mean, we don't all love the same kind of cookie. We don't all love the same kind of music or even vote for the same people. But we all do love. In fact, Jesus never even said you would like every person. He only said you're supposed to love them. And when love comes first, everything else falls into place. We can care for each other. We can support each other. We can listen to each other and really listen to what God is saying and what each other are saying. We can focus on our similarities and we can serve others and others can serve us. In fact, we can even love ourselves. And we can really love God. And that's what this whole thing is all about. It's all about this new revival that will take over everything when love starts first. And it starts with me and with you. It starts with all the people in this room. Choosing love over everything else. And that will change the world. Amen. And with all those who faithfully come before us, let us stand and profess our faith, saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will 
have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. all those who joined me in my childhood song and actions. Let us go to God in prayer today. Jesus, we know that with every blessing it begins with love. The blessings that have come from having family around, a warm hug that surrounds us and a caring friend, the love that starts with forgiveness and grace and support. The love seen in a beautiful sunset, in a delicate cactus blossom, and the power of a hummingbird's wings. It is because of these and other moments that we know this love is crazy about us. It loves us forever. This love supports us and guides us, comforts us, and strengthens us. It is the love that worries with us and carries us when we're weak and helps us rest and heals us and walks with us and leads us when we don't know the way. We know there have been moments when we've missed those signs of love. And when we do, your love shows up once again, working in us and through us. Lord, we ask that you're with those that are in need of your love today, especially be with those who are in need of your healing mercies and those who need comfort from their grief. Be a guide to those who are making hard decisions, who are caring for others and are parenting children. Support those who struggle to see your love. Be with individuals who can't seem to get a break, for the children in foster systems, <clears throat> and for people who live in war-torn countries. 
Lord, be with all those in nations in Africa. Pour out your love upon the people in Ethiopia, Kenya, South Africa, and Malawi, Eritrea, and Nigeria, Tanzania, Ghana, Niger, Sudan, Uganda, and Cameroon. Let your love become a blessing that shows up in the most unexpected places so that we too can know and be reminded of the love you have for us. Give us the words to say and the actions to complete and the places to go so that others might experience this same love through us. May your love burst forth from us as a revival, changing the ways we live and do. And in those moments, give us the reassurance of your love that guides us towards your prayer And show us the love when we need it the most. Join us as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hope is in God. When we share our time, talent, and money, we are sharing the message of God's hope with others. Join me in giving through our online giving webpage found in the link or QR code. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jesus, for the many ways you help us. Return our hope to you and heal our brokenness. We offer all that we have back to you for your glory and purpose. Amen. Jesus is asking you, do you love me? If so, go and love my people. Care for the creation, support those in need, show love to all. I encourage you to check out our love notes outside, read through all the ways that we have seen love through this series, and fill in the rest of the blank spots with the ways that you have seen love, the ways that you show love or experience love these days, so that our love revival can continue. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you. May the love of God the Father surround you and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always.